All right, so again, just a bit of history on, so I'm going to be talking about the SWAT satellite uh, mission that's planned to launch in 2021. And again, it was recommended from the decadal survey in 2007. Um, NASA, in connection with the uh, French Space Agency, started developing the mission. And the big objectives for the, the SWAT satellite provide global inventory of surface water bodies and characterize storage changes and river discharges. So there's a hydrology component, but it's also going to fly over the ocean. So there's an oceanography uh, aspect looking at mesoscale and submesoscale circulation. So I'm going to focus primarily on uh, the terrestrial side for the hydrology aspects related to groundwater. Um, again, it's right now it's set to launch in fall of 2021 out of Vandenberg Air Force Base, and SpaceX is actually going to launch the satellite. And what it's going to do is it's going to measure rivers and water bodies. Um, and I'm, again, I'm going to drop all the ocean stuff for this talk. But rivers wider than roughly 50 to 100 meters um, in width, and water bodies somewhere between 100 and 250 meters by 100 and 250 meters in extent. Um, so the actual measurements we'll get from the satellite are water extent, water surface elevation, uh, the backscatter from the water surface, as well as the slope of the water surface. And the orbit, and this is where it gets a little different from some of the other satellites uh, that I work with at least, it's a 21-day near-global uh, orbit. And so every 21 days, it repeats its exact cycle. But because it's a wide swath altimeter system, you get multiple hits in a particular location depending on uh, where you are uh, based on latitude, which I'll, I'll show more in, in a little bit. And so what's novel about SWAT relative to what we have today is you're going to get the surface extent and the elevation at the same exact time. So right now we have altimeters that are giving elevation of water, and we have things like Landsat and other sensors that are giving us water extent, but we don't have them merged together. Um, so the, the simultaneous measurement as well as the resolution. So the resolutions are going to be uh, quite good relative to what we have now. So for water surface elevations, we're looking at you know, less than 10 centimeters for the vertical accuracy. Uh, widths, plus or minus 15% for river widths. And then slopes are 1.7 centimeters per kilometer is uh, sort of the mission targets. It's a three and a half year mission with uh, the first half of the year is dedicated to, to getting it up and running and then a three year science mission. So hopefully we'll get a three year stream of data at least. Um, it's gonna be a little challenging to work with some of the data. We're talking about terabytes of data per day for the life of the mission. So everything is migrating to a cloud-based system for working with the data, looking at the data, analyzing the data. Uh, relative to, you know, to this group, I think the, the derived discharge product is probably the most uh, interesting as, as well as the water levels in the rivers. Uh, but the idea is if we see change, like we're going to go over a river, go over a river, you're going to see the extent, you're going to get the slope, you're going to see the elevation. And so we can look at uh, the changes in an area. Um, but what we'll never see, uh, it's hard to see in this figure here, um, is the actual bathymetry below whatever low elevation the satellite's going to see. So there's going to have to be some assumptions on the missing bathymetry piece and roughness. But once we have those, and we've got some methods that do that, we can then estimate a river discharge from that. Uh, this is just giving you a sense of the rivers that, that we're going to see. So again, you know, it does have some limitations. Um, it's 50 to 100 meter wide rivers, and this is just a, a general uh, value, drain roughly 2,000 square kilometers. So it's not all rivers of the world that we're going to be monitoring. It's your larger rivers, um, but in terms of surface extents, I think this figure is showing something like 400,000 square kilometers of water surface uh, terrestrial side is going to be monitored. And this is getting at the repeat visit. Uh, you can see the global average is, is every 11 days you're going to get a measurement. You get more at the poles than you do at the equator. And I think the best way to look at this is, uh, I don't know if it shows up very well. This is an example in the Mississippi. And so looking at 450 stream gauges over the 21-day orbit, the, the highlighted in blues are the ones that are getting hit on particular days. And um, I, I'm going to pull out two gauges in, as an example for this in a second. 
Uh, but this is just uh, looking at the Mississippi Basin, those gauges. You can see this uh, frequency distribution of uh, samples. Most of the gauges are hit, getting hit twice every 21 days. So it's not like weekly, but it's, you know, it's, it's you know, a couple times every 21 days. And if we look at this next figure, I'm just pulling out two examples, uh, the top one and the bottom one, and it's the actual USGS flow with the sampled SWAT data, and then we have one with uncertainty on it. But my, the point at the bottom is really the highlight. The one site's getting hit three times per 21 days. The other site's getting hit twice per 21 days. But the spacing of the measurements are not uniform. So the top gauge is uh, on day 8, 19, and 20. So you're getting two back-to-back -back days and then one at day 8. So it's a, it's a strange uh, spacing of the samples that are going to be a little challenging for people to, to think about initially. Um, and the point of this is, that the, based on some, again, it hasn't flown yet, so I only have synthetic data. We think we can do a really good job fitting the stream flow distributions, maybe not the day-to-day -day variability, but the distribution of flow. Um, and this other figure I'm just showing here is the, the quantiles. So based on the flow distributions that we fit with the synthetic SWAT data, we can estimate the quantiles fairly well. And so we think we can get a pretty good uh, understanding of the, the basics uh, of the flow distribution uh, characteristics at these various gauges, which brings me to the summary here. So again, SWAT is going to see these rivers. If you want to think in terms of the size of the rivers that are going to be measured, it's, again, something draining around 2,000 square kilometers. Um, the river discharge is a derived product um, uh, that does require some fitting. You're actually going to get multiple versions of the river discharge. But what I haven't really highlighted is we don't have all the studies done yet, but base flow is probably going to be the best river discharge that we estimate based on the sampling characteristics that we're seeing. Um, so good estimates of base flow are, are pretty likely for these bigger rivers. And then as well as the lakes and reservoirs, we're going to see the storage change plus have the inflows and outflows of some of the bigger ones. It's really going to help close the water budget for these systems, which again can tie back and help understand the groundwater system a little better. Um, um, just the last plug, if anyone's interested in using SWAT synthetic data, let me know. We've got a program set up for early adopters.